I'm Chris Page, I'm a Liverpool fan, I'm a Scouser. My name's Stephen Allison. I'm a Manchester United fan because I'm Manchester born and bred. I hate Manchester United for many reasons, but honestly the biggest reason is that they're more successful than us. I hate Liverpool because I'm a human being. I've seen them through my lifetime um, overturn our, our trophy hall and that pisses me right off. This is the biggest game because it's the two most successful clubs. We're close geographically, we're close in terms of success. We're going to score goals, and this is as confident as I've ever felt going into a game in Old Trafford. That rivalry has been built up over the years by the two clubs that have gone for it the most, that represent English football the best on the continent. How can it be anything other than the biggest game in England? It should be easy for Liverpool this weekend, and it's football, anything can happen. But we're the second best team in this country, they're not. I think it'll probably be a draw. I hope for a KG 1-0 win. 3-1 to Liverpool. Manchester United fans walk out of Old Trafford and realise that attacking football is what they want to see. Who's the biggest club? Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious United are the biggest club, that's why everyone writes about us. The, the, the journalists basically said it themselves, they don't write about Tottenham, they don't write about City, they don't write about Liverpool anymore because nobody cares, no one clicks, United generate clicks. You're either with us or you want to be us. United capitalised for me on a downtime in Liverpool and it happened at the right time for United, you know, the Premier League and all that type of stuff. But I think we'll look back 20, 30 years from now and what Manchester United and Ferguson's legacy will be and the owners at the time, their legacy will be ruining English football. And I truly believe that because the globalisation, the, the single-mindedness that Manchester United pursue commercial opportunities has for me changed football and not for the better and listen I'm not saying Liverpool wouldn't have done that had the money been there at the time but Manchester United are the ones that have driven that and people have had to keep up with it and you know youth football in this country isn't done right anymore there's too much money not filtering down from these big clubs and for me that is because of what Manchester United did in the early 90s and that and his 13 league titles will be Ferguson's legacy. That's absolutely mental to put the commercialisation of football at the feet of Alex Ferguson. Alex Ferguson didn't spend five billion on Premier League TV rights. And Alex Ferguson didn't ruin the Premier League. Alex Ferguson created the Premier League. He made it interesting. If it had been Liverpool and Arsenal boring their ways through getting one nils here, there and everywhere and passing it back to the goalkeeper so he can roll it out to the centre half and then pass it back to the goalkeeper again then the Premier League never would have happened. It happened because of the likes of Ryan Giggs. It happened because of the likes of Eric Cantona. And it happened because of the likes of Sir Alex Ferguson. And you mentioned youth football, but no one does youth football like Manchester United, as you know. But the difference is the money that's been filtering into these big clubs now hasn't filtered down to grassroots levels in England. And that, and that for me is a real, it's a massive, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous, you know. Manchester United, again, I say it again, that pursuit, that single-mindedness and the way they pursued success, and I'm, again, I'm not saying that Liverpool wouldn't have done it, but it has, has had a major effect on English football. I think you're absolutely mental. I think what happened at City and Chelsea had a far more devastating effect on what's happening in English football than what's happened at Manchester United. What happened with the Premier League is a consequence of nothing except for what happened with the Premier League and what happened with Sky Sports and all the rest of it. You can't blame the the devaluing of what happens at youth football on Manchester United. That is absolutely ludicrous. I'm not blaming, so it. Listen, I'm not, I'm not blaming it all on them, but I do think they've had a major hand so in it. So Alex that. Ferguson's legacy is going to be the most successful manager the world's seen. And listen, he was a good manager and I'll give him that. And he did it for <laughs> absolutely years. And I can't say anything otherwise. I'd be ridiculous to say anything otherwise. But it's how you've reacted to losing Ferguson, which... I almost feel sorry for you because you can't see it yet and I've been through it and I've lived through it. You know, we won the FA Cup and I think it was 1992 against Sunderland and we thought winning a couple of trophies here there through the 90s was going to be enough to see us get back to league titles. That's what Manchester United aren't going to do under Mourinho and you don't see it coming and that's almost why I feel sorry for Man United fans right now. United have had our dip, we had Moyes, we managed to somehow survive. You won a league survive. title since Ferguson. Have you won a league title in colour? No. No, not in, not in the Premier League, but right. that's why I'm in a good position to be able to sit here and tell you, you can't see it coming, because you think a League Cup and a Europa League is enough to get you back to win, no, no. winning we think league titles. And that isn't, because Jose Mourinho path. will never win a league title with Manchester no. United. Jose Mourinho is one of the most successful managers in rounding world football at the moment. This is a guy that's won a European Cup with Porto, and he won a treble with Inter Milan, and you're saying that he can't win a domestic title in England? Again, 
with Manchester United. He's yes, the I only am. man that's won back-to-back -back titles in England apart from Sir Alex Ferguson. Are you telling me this guy doesn't know what he's going he's, he's becoming a dinosaur. You know, his best football was 12 years ago or something like that with Chelsea. He's not created the side. But he's got a better record He's got United he's not created. than Klopp's got at Liverpool in this current era. Listen, Jose Mourinho's walked into a game of Monopoly with Manchester United, right? And he's picked up Park Lane and Mayfair and he thinks he's a genius for putting a hotel on there. Right? That's all he's doing with his transfers. His 90 million transfer Lukaku, his transfer for Pogba, all that type of stuff. He's walked in. Klopp started with Vine Street and Bow Street and Marlborough and all that on the oranges, mate. He's had to put a few houses on there. We've worked our way around to Trafalgar. We've just put a, our first house on Trafalgar. How, how Van Dijk. dare this, you sit there and say what? big transfers when you've just spent 75 million on Chris Smalling? Chris Small, and we ripped Southampton off of Virgil van Dijk. Definitely. He's been incredible since he's come in. People around the league are looking no, at him No, you might think he's been incredible. What on earth is going on? Because you've been looking at Rice Krispies and Cocoa Pops at centre half. <laughs> That's why you think he's incredible, because he's a half decent Premier League footballer. That's what you've bought, and you've been rinsed for it. We have so you not. can't we have talk about United being rinsed. Time. United have got Lukaku and Paul Pogba for massive, massive money. But you've just bought Van Dijk for massive money, so stop calling the pot kettle black, you know what I mean? I'm not calling the pot kettle black. Mm, Liverpool it. need to be getting up there. I want Liverpool to be spending big money on transfers. Liverpool I'm not saying that Manchester United are bad for doing money. that. Liverpool outspent United in the 90s. Liverpool outspent United in the noughties. And Liverpool haven't outspent us at the moment, but you've still got absolutely jack shit to win for it. The last thing you won was, what, six years ago? And that was a tin pot trophy. Last year, we won the League Cup. We threw it in the cup and was like, right, carry on. Let's go and go, go do the rest of the things we're doing this season. Liverpool have got major issues in that regard. You know, we need to turn that trophy uh, account around. You know, we need to start putting uh, silverware on the sideboard. But we will do that with Jürgen Klopp. So you can't I talk about spend. Because I, the spend that saying, you guys put in no, no, the no, noughties... No, no, no. I was talking about Jose Mourinho and spending. I'm not talking about Liverpool spending. Mm. Manchester United are entitled to spend the money however they want. I just don't think Mourinho, who's turned up to this ma imaginary game of Monopoly that I've created and, th and put a hotel on Mayfair and Park Lane, anybody could do that. You know what I mean? Anybody can make the signings that he's made. You can identify the players that he's made. I could do that in a footy manager game. Do you know what I mean? Jose Mourinho... He's walked off with Bobby Robson's notebook and he's been casting it around for 20 years and he's not made any changes to it. Football's moved on and it's leaving him behind. He, he hasn't added to that page since so 2005, why is, why is he winning trophies last season? That because Klopp's he, not able to win with his revolutionary football. Because he, Klopp has won trophies with his revolutionary football. Not at Liverpool, eh? No, but he's getting there. And where we were Jose when Mourinho Klopp came has in. literally won everywhere he's been, including the 18 months he spent at United. He's got two trophies to show for it. Of course. And I so you can't that. say he's a dinosaur when he's winning things right now. When I we could are win with those Manchester, I could win with that Manchester right United team and the, and the way that the winning Gaal. was ingrained in them, you know what I mean? And Jose Mourinho's come in and he's, he's created the culture which he does and he gets results which he does. But now I think we'll find that the landscape's changed. I think we'll find that Manchester City are going to be difficult to topple for a few years. I think Liverpool will be their closest challenges. I think we'll see that come the end of the season when we finish above you, when we put you in your place on Saturday. And when you realise, as I say, when everyone walks out of that ground and go, yeah, not really a fan of this type of football, this is not what I want to see from Manchester United side. Manchester United side should be attacking oh, Liverpool you lot, every you day lot of the City, week. You've had a discernible style of play for about 18 months and you think you're the walking gift to the, how football should be played. Some of the best, best, best teams that I've, the world has ever seen have been defensive first. Talking about some of the Juventus teams. Hey, listen, Talking about the AC like Milan the team football. of 89-90. One of the greatest football insides ever. You've got to go defensive first to win titles. And you've got to go defensive first to win trophies. And that's why Klopp is not a winner and Jose Mourinho is. But it's he that, might blow away some teams it's every that now and then. mentality which has kept Jose Mourinho back because you don't have to to play defensive football to win titles. Manchester City are proving that this season. Manchester City proved it a couple of years ago. Leicester proved it, do you know what I mean? Leicester they, was a counter-attack inside. They started off and they that first part of the season they scored loads of goals and they were playing counter-attack. You can't even bring not, City in it. City came third last year with an average defence. A defence that's still probably better. This year? It's probably Is it defensive football? Of course, you can win attack with attack. Manchester attacking. City have won it with attack. Improved football. their defence. They bought a whole new back five but in the summer, and it took them in the same way as Manchester United to first. That's the difference I'm talking about. United are still dealing with a 2011 
defence. We're talking two wingers we used to have in 2011. Who's fault that though? Outs. How many managers have you had in place there to replace exactly, those yeah. players? And those yeah, players have been because of the restrictions on him, has had to do it piecemeal. You know, he's had to wait and get a player here and a player there. And yeah, we've spent big money on Virgil van Dijk, but we know that we have addressed one of those problems now. Manchester United haven't addressed these issues. If this is a tactical genius like Jose Mourinho, who thinks like you that defensive football is the way to do it, wouldn't he have sorted that out by now? I'd but he can't identify the only these way players. To do it. He can't identify these players. You have to be able like to go City defensive. Have gone out to. and and identified the players to sort them out, and they've gone and done it. And Jose Mourinho sat on his sat on his hands and spent another ninety million on Lukaku, and it's done him nothing. David De Gea is the best keeper in world football and he's saved you so many times. He's probably saved you around 15 points this season. And listen, I'm not going to argue with that. He's your goalkeeper. You signed him. That's the guy's that's, job. That's, that's, that's what he's doing. It's like saying, oh, that striker's scored you right loads of goals. Without that striker, where would you be? Well, he exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's, stupid, boy. it's a stupid argument. I mean, he's better than having a traffic call like Liverpool have got in that. Mm, Luis Carius is, is turned it around, you know. Seriously, since since Virgil van Dijk came in and Jurgen Klopp gave him that that number one jersey, as it were, he's he's steadily improved week on week. And you listen, he's not at David de Gea's level yet, but equally, our ah, defence has been better than people give credit for since van Dijk came in. Lukaku's a danger man. I mean, I don't I don't think that Manchester United play to his strengths quite as much as they probably should. But if you give him the ball to feet in the area, he knows where the back of the net is. Sanchez, yeah, he's had a poor start, I'd say. From from my knowledge of it, um, I think it's one goal, two assists in eight games. But he's a good player. He'll always be a good player. He will he will he will start getting results at Manchester United. So I'd say if I had if I was worried about anyone, it would probably be Lukaku more than everyone else. But I do think Virgil Van Dijk can do a number on him. Liverpool's danger man's clearly Salah. Clearly Salah. But I think it's also the fluidity of the front three. I think they come as a package. Uh, they do play as a team. They play excellently as a team. That is something that I think United lack. A little bit is team cohesion in the gameplay. But I think that you, you come in into Old Trafford where Jose's made this pretty much a fortress. We've lost a couple of times to City. That's essentially it, really. He has got a bit of a, a problem with Guardiola. But I don't, see, I don't see Liverpool turning up here. I still think you're mega tactically naive. And I think you say your defence is better, but I think it's the system. Because you're so fluid going forward, again, I think it's systematic why your defence is so poor. And when you look at the pace that we're going to deploy, whether it be Rashford, whether it be Sanchez, whether that be Lukaku, as long as Paul Pogba's playing, which we haven't had recently, uh, or certainly when we played you guys, that was probably the start of our slip this season, lacking Paul Pogba. You're going to get shown what it's like when you've got some tactics behind you and when you don't just try and let them play this attacking football. And then maybe you'll walk out the ground saying, do you know what, maybe we do need a manager that knows how to play in the big games and knows how to win these big games because we ain't got one. Liverpool fans, I guarantee you, will not be thinking that because we have 100% trust in Jürgen Klopp and not just about his tactics and you know the way that Liverpool are playing, playing at the moment, but the signings that he's made. He hasn't made a dud yet, you know what I mean? And He's been here two and a half years and every signing pretty much has worked or hasn't been counted out yet. You know, Luis Carius is probably the only one where there's still question marks and he's massively improved over the last two months. So every Liverpool signing we've made is has gone on to work and I don't think Liverpool fans will think that for a long, long time yet. I think Jürgen Klopp's got time. He's got time to build something special here. Time that Jose Mourinho might not get at Manchester United if he doesn't bring a league title sooner rather than later. Let's talk about Steven Gerrard, the most overrated gobshite of a footballer that has ever walked the face of the earth. How? 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 Are you mad? Why play a simple pass when a 60-yarder for a goal kick will do? Joe, your greatest ever achievement in the Gerrard era was when you won the Champions League in 2005. And it was a great achievement, I'll give you that. And it's known as what? A Steven Gerrard-inspired comeback. The reason he was 3-0 down in the first place is because Steven Gerrard's got the tactical discipline of a cat. And he couldn't track his rack as Kaká was running riot. And Steven poor Javier Alonso. has got the tactical discipline of a cat. Poor he's Javi played Alonso. right back, he played left back, he's played centre midfield, he's played in the 10, he's played right wing. If a player yeah. like that he hasn't got a tactical been, can discipline be trusted to, be somewhere to do else. any of those positions, he understands every position on poor the field. Poor Javi Alonso got run ragged by Steven Gerrard wasn't given the trust and, the, and given the role in the team to go and assert himself for Do you know why you won the trophy that year? Because we Didier Mann and else. Jabby Alonso, who are two belting footballers, actually had the tactical nous to try and hold it. While Gerard, with the tactical discipline of a paper bag in the wind, just went and did whatever he wanted. 
That was why. So he's why the most overrated the, Premier League the footballer Cup ever. In 2006 when he, he played West Ham with <laughs> Nigel Rio Coca. That's why you had his opposite number was Sunday League why level. Why weren't you there? We was having a week off. 2006. My son was born in 2006. That was the last time you won a proper trophy. Let's be honest with yourselves. FA Cup is a proper trophy. Since then, my son's been winning five league titles. He's seen us win a Champions League, including two other finals. We've won a hatful of League Cups and an FA Cup. You want to talk about the here and now. United is the here and now. Sorry, the here and now is from 2006 to 2018. To, to now. That's the here and that's now. The here and I now. think you quite misguided. I'm saying there's a 12-year-old. I'm, I'm pretty a 12-year-old sure that's seen not United win all the definition of here and now. It's here and I now. think here and now would be this season. Here and this season, listen, no trophies are decided yet, are they? The league table isn't decided yet, and we will finish higher than you. How do you work that out? Because we're going to beat you. When we beat you on Saturday, we're, we're five beat, points yeah. ahead of you. And how are you going to overcome that? Well, uh, to be honest, I don't. I don't mind. I don't. I'll, of course, I mind. I'll be gutted if we're five points behind, yeah. But I still back this Liverpool side to go on a run and win every game between now and the between that game and the end of the season. You say Mourinho's not got a great record against Klopp. They've all been draws, so you can't say one manager's getting the better of those. Re- Joe, this is what the the press narrative is. Jose's not got a great record against Klopp. He hasn't. They've drawn. Sorry, they so played, Klopp's not got they the same record. Eight times, Klopp's won three times, drawn so four times, United. and lost one. Let's talk about United and Liverpool. We've played each other three times so far. It's been nil-nil twice. And but you wanted once. to talk about Klopp and Mourinho, so let's take it back. Eight games, three wins for Klopp, shit four draws, one let's talk loss, about and what one done, loss yeah. was dead it's rubber done, when they were four up from the first leg it's between Borussia Dortmund and Real Madrid, and yet that was the only time face. that he managed to beat them. Ask me if I care. I don't care. I only care about Manchester United. I don't care what about the last what five results between Liverpool else. and Manchester United. What, when Louis van Gaal was here? What were the last five results? When Louis van Gaal was here? Include Louis van Gaal. Oh yeah, you beat us in the Europa League. And then you bottled it against Sevilla. So we've won you one. We've won once and we've drawn four times. Yeah. So there's no, so that was there's one no clear the van Gaal. dominant team there, is there? Let's talk about what's going on right now in the league then. Because United have got the second best record against the top six, which the press don't talk about. Mm. You've won two out of all your games. One of them was a great win against City. And I'm glad you beat them. I really am. But you've only won one other game against a top six team. Why so does don't that tell that to us? Because you, you supposedly they got this great record against the, the press top narr- six. The, but then that flies in the face of the press narrative but against of us not being able to beat teams further down the league. We wouldn't be where we were if we were just able to be top six sides. So, all right, you can't go through a season like last season. So where why we were are you saying that this attacking the- style? which I'm going to call tactically naive, of Klopp is the way to go. Because you're not winning the big games and you're not winning trophies. Jose Mourinho because I enjoy winning trophies, watching football. winning big games. I enjoy watching football, Steve. And seriously, I would rather go and watch a Liverpool team any day of the week when both teams might not win a trophy. I'll tell you what I'd prefer to go and spend my money on. I'll tell you what I'd prefer, and that's Jürgen Klopp's football. Because Jose Mourinho is turgid football. No. You know, he used He's, to... This is, a, this it, is again, bullshit, For though. Chelsea in when 2004... When was battering teams 4 at the start of the season, was that boring? I didn't find that boring. No, I but found it was pretty good. But I bet the, the rest of the time has been pretty right. boring. Are you since, telling me that you, don't, you go through times? You've drawn nine times. You can't call Jose Mourinho's team boring when you've drawn about as much as pissing bright enough. We have scored the second most goals in the league and we've scored the most goals in the Champions League. That is a side and that's you've exciting got a to watch. With holes all over the place. If you think, we haven't. Right, if you think we it's exciting, in the last five games. if you think that's exciting, are you five years old? No. I'll, that's This is match of the day highlight bullshit. That's not football. Football is what happens over the course of 90 minutes, over the course of a season. And if you're leaking as many as you are at the back, that's a consequence of how attacking you are going forward. Ultimately, all that is matters... Is it about balance then? Of course it's about okay, balance. Okay, so who's got the better goal difference? It doesn't matter, we're higher than you in the table. For now. You don't get extra points. If you win 3-0 and we win 1-0, how many points do you get? You get the same, mate. Thank you. But my point is, we so are a balanced you, side. Would Much you more rather, balanced than people think. Would you rather because one Liverpool nil your way to the title, Liverpool, which you don't even know what it looks like, or would you rather... I do, I've seen us win the league five times. <laughs> would you rather... I was born in 1982. Would you rather smash all of the, the league up for 30 games and then lose a load and ultimately not win the league? I'd rather win the league. And of course you would. And it doesn't matter how. But if would. I had a choice between two sides that aren't guaranteed to win the title this season and aren't going to win the title, I'd tell you what I prefer to watch. Oh. And that's what I started the segment I'm, with. I'm not aware about, that United are not 
this uh, all-conquering side. But I'm also adult enough to know that we're going through one of the hardest transitions that any club's ever had to go for. We had the greatest manager of all time there for over a quarter of a century. I then we know. got an absolute nugget in who didn't have a pissing clue what was going on. And he can't manage in Sunderland. He can't manage in Spain. And he definitely can't manage with what's going on at West Ham. The, guy, the job was too big for the guy. Then we got Lou Van Gaal in, who was batshit crazy, and I loved him for it. But ultimately, his football was dire, and his football was bad. Jose's football is nowhere near as bad as what Louis van Gaal's was. Jose Mourinho is turning all of that around, and he's taking United back to the top. He's moving too slowly, I think, for Manchester United fans. I think there has been an improvement. I agree with you. I think you've seen that year on year, just the points and stuff, and, and, and maybe even the goals that they've scored probably more this season than last. But Jürgen Klopp's job was much harder, and every Liverpool manager's job since, what, late... 1998, let's say, has been harder than what Jose Mourinho's walked into because this Liverpool side floundered for too long. This Liverpool team floundered for too long. So don't kid yourself and think Jose Mourinho's got the, the hardest job in world football. He I hasn't. The hardest he job. really hasn't. I said, this is a big job to turn around and it requires patience. That's what I think people need. It's been 18 months, that's all. That's all he's been here. In 18 months, delivered two trophies. 18 months, seriously. Listen, you've called the League Cup a Timber Trophy yourself. The Europa League is not, and he's done incredibly well. And he will always get results, Jose Mourinho. But it, again, I go back to it. I could have said a treble if you wanted to get really silly, because he was calling it a treble last year when we won the Charity Shield. I don't no, count that. No. But do you know what I'm saying? We, we are picking things Listen, up. I, but again, I, I, I know what that feels like to go through. I've been there as a fan, and I've thought, oh, we're still we're near enough. But it's league titles that matter. You know that yourself. Your Man United fans know that when they sing it at us all the time. You know, everybody knows that it's those league what titles. I can't remember the words. It's uh, 20 times. Something like that, yeah, something like that. Um, and we'll sing a song back to you mentioning European Cups and stuff and fair play. That's the way that football bans has gone. But this Liverpool side is going to win a title again before Manchester United because <laughs> we've got a better manager, we've got a better front three, we've got better players around the pitch and we've got a team. We've got a team So, got, so if you've got the better the team and the better heart. manager, why are you below us in the table? Because the season's not finished. You know yourself that. You've won titles on the last day of the season. You know, and Manchester City have done exactly the same. Everybody knows the league's done when the 38 games have been played. And right now... 38 games haven't been played and by the end of the season we'll have proved it like we proved it last year that we were better than you. 